Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas and welcome here to the Church of St Stephen's in Lansdowne, part of the benefits of St Stephen's Lansdowne and St Mary's Chalkham. My name is Philip Hawthorne, I'm the rector here and you are welcome wherever you're watching this, whenever you're watching it. We're scattered but God unites us by the Holy Spirit and we worship God together. So welcome. If you'd like an order of service and you haven't got one, you'll find a link on the YouTube page uh, that you use to get to this service or on our website. And if you'd like to have some bread and wine with you where you are, that would be great. I'll be making communion on behalf of everybody. But if you'd like to share in that as well, where you are, that would be wonderful. And thanks in advance to everyone who's made it possible for this service to be online on this Christmas morning. I hope you're having a great day where you are. So some words from our gospel. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Friends, the Lord be with you. In the beginning, when it was very dark, God said, let there be light. And there was light. So Felix will light the last of the candles on our Advent crown. God our Maker, today the Saviour is born, and those who live in darkness are seeing a great light. Help us who greet the birth of Christ with joy to live in the light of your Son and to share the good news of your love. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who has come into the world. Amen. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Let's sing a carol together. Small. 
So we have some space for a moment. And into this sacred space, which is within us and between us, we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now hear the words of the angel to Joseph. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Therefore let us seek the forgiveness of God through Jesus, the Saviour of the world. So a moment of quiet and reflection. God, you gaze on us with such love, and yet so often we prefer to hide in the shadows. When we do, we ask, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You give us one another to share this journey of life with. Yet so often we put up barriers For the healing of our relationships, we ask, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You give us a beautiful world to enjoy and for our good. And yet, for the ways that we act irresponsibly and unsustainably, and for the healing of our living planet, we ask, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you and upon me. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
the Gloria sung for us by the St Stephen's Choir. Now the collect for this Christmas day, God of grace and truth, whose word brings light to birth in the heart of a darkening world, which fears a love it cannot name. May flesh be blessed and born anew by a truth which leaves the heavens and walks the waiting earth through Jesus Christ, the word incarnate. Amen. Jenny Lee is a wonderful member of St Mary's Chalkham and she's going to read for us now from that church. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you. Or again, I will be his father, and he will be my son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his servants flames of fire. But of the sun, he says, your throne, O God, is for ever and ever. And the righteous scepter is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And in the beginning, Lord, you founded the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like clothing, like a cloak, you will roll them up, and like clothing, they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will never end. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things came into being, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light. He came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. 
He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It's good to be here in the middle of the church. And I was working out that this is the 180th Christmas that St Stephen's has learned. Maybe there's never been another one quite like this. So we prepare to hear the 180th Christmas message in this wonderful building. So as we do, let's bow our heads. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. Was that a surprise? I hope so. Strange being in this sacred place and yet hearing a commercial song, such as you might hear in A, Morrison's, B, Sainsbury's, C, Primark, wherever you go. There are more song surprises to come. I thought as it's Christmas, we might have a little game together. And listen carefully and I will surprise you with the hidden lines from Christmas songs. And when you hear them, if you know what the next line is, then do sing it. And if you do, allow yourself to feel a bit smug. Firstly, because you knew it, but also that you can sing it. Because here in church, on Christmas morning, no one will be able to sing. Also, you won't need to go home after this service. And that's good because as we record this service now, Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. Actually, it's raining, but you get the idea. One of the privileges I have in this Christmas season is to speak to people who don't normally have much to do with church or religion for whatever reason. So some, maybe many, their image of God is what keeps them from wanting to be involved or to explore faith further. I always find it good to be able to try and dispel some of those images that people can have of God, often completely understandable. And that can often come as quite a surprise to them. So we're just going to explore two of those briefly. The first is that God is not a grumpy old so-and-so with a big grey beard sitting up there on a cloud waiting to zap us. Oh, let's see you step down a line. Oh, I'm going to give them a right seeing to. A bit like a parent who's always in a bad mood. One you can imagine noting down all the stuff you get wrong. He's making a list. He's checking it twice. Well done. It may be a surprise to know that God actually wants the best for everyone, no matter what. That's the true message of Christmas. The loving gaze of Mary and Joseph is how God gazes on each one of us. And when Jesus comes to earth, it's a surprise for those who wanted a strong liberator to fight the Roman presence. Instead, God comes as a vulnerable, fragile and peaceful child and invites not aggression, but humility. And his liberation is not so much from the state, but from religious power in its limiting ways. When God gives Jesus to the world, God thinks, I'm 
dreaming. Or rather, a light Christmas, as the Gospel said. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Which brings me to my second surprise. It's a surprise for many to hear that God is not all about sweetness and niceness, that faith is not just about being holier than everyone else. It's not simply having. Of course, Christmas is a wonderful time. Life is wonderful, but not all the time and not for everyone. The reason I started this sermon with have yourself a merry little Christmas is because it's a really good example of glossing life's tougher things. The song was written for Judy Garland in 1944 for a musical Meet Me in St. Louis. And the original lyrics were these. Someday soon we all will be together if the fates allow. Until then we'll have to muddle through somehow. In 1944, of course, many families were separated by their their menfolk, particularly being over in Europe, fighting the Second World War. And so that whole idea of muddling through and and the, and the, um, uh, the sadness of being apart was very pertinent. Then in 1957, Frank Sinatra wanted to make an album called A Jolly Christmas. And he decided that those lines were not jolly enough and had them jollied up. And so it was changed to the line we know now, hang a shining star upon the highest bough. But maybe there's not been a year since then where those original lyrics strike such a chord until now, one day soon, we all will be together. You might look on the nativity scene and see cosy and nice. But just think a bit more about the experiences of those characters in it. While shepherds watch their flocks by night. And then they were scared out of their wits by a load of angels. And the magi They were dealing with a murderous, scheming, political tyrant in Herod. And Mary and Joseph, it was so shameful for them that Mary was pregnant and they were unmarried. They were going to their hometown of Bethlehem and yet none of their family would have them to stay. They were outcast. Not to mention a childbirth in a stable with blood, sweat, muck and agony. The nativity represents fear and danger, the outcast and the pain. Our service theme this Christmas at St Stephen's and St Mary's is from a carol. Yet in thy dark street shineth The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. God is in the darkness as well as the good things. And hasn't this year had plenty of darkness, especially this Christmas? So how does that everlasting light shine in the darkness of the world? It's not by magic. Another surprise, God has a crazy plan that the light shines in the world through us, through our fragility and vulnerability. When the Christ child is born in us, then with that light, we see into the darkness as God does, and we enable the light to shine there. We see where the light of hope, peace and love is needed most, And we seek to be like Jesus and become them. To become peace 
for the fearful, to become hope for the despairing, comfort for the lonely, food for the hungry, warmth for the homeless. And this comes to pass. May Christ be born in you, your heart and home, this Christmas. Amen. Let's say our creed together. Though he was divine, he did not cling to God, but humbled himself and was born a human of Mary. He lived God's kingdom of love and peace on earth, and was obedient to death on the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. A wonderful part of our church here at St Stephen's um, are Claire, Oscar and Felix. And they're going to lead us now in our prayers. When we say, O holy child of Bethlehem, please respond. Be, Be born in us today. O holy child of Bethlehem. Be born in us today. We thank you for Christmas, for the presents we get and give for the excitement, the joy and time we can spend enjoying ourselves and for amazing meals. And thank you for reminding us that you gave the best ever present in Jesus. Help us always to live as he did, with kindness, fairness and love. O oh, holy child of Bethlehem, be born in us today. We pray for an end to this pandemic. Thank you for all who have helped us so much this year, in the NHS, in caring, retail, emergency services, education, communications and hospitality, for the scientists who have developed vaccines. We pray for governments around the world that they may work together and learn from this year, that they may make policies based on compassion and justice looking for the needs of those with little or nothing. O holy child of Bethlehem, be born in us today. We pray for your church that we may be light in the world. We pray for Bishop Peter as he has treatment for cancer and for Bishop Ruth and all her extra work. And we pray for our churches that we may be your love in our parishes. O holy child of Bethlehem, be, be born, born in us today. We pray for the healing of our living planet, that we will learn to live sustainably and responsibly, giving thanks for the beauty of the earth and treading gently, that we will pass on to future generations all that we have enjoyed. O holy child of Bethlehem, be, be born, born in us today. We pray for those who will find this Christmas difficult, for those whose plans have changed and can no longer spend it with friends or family, for those who miss loved ones, for those who are lonely, for those who are far from home and those who are homeless. O holy child of Bethlehem, be born in us today. Come close to those who are sick, ill or anxious. We pray especially for Ollie Benzie, for Sarah Knight, Sally Pym, Martin Richardson, Tony and Eileen Stevenson, Bill Fraser, Jean, Paul and Reese, Hilary Buchan and Rebecca. And in this space, we pray for those on your hearts this Christmas. 
O holy child of Bethlehem, be born in us today. We pray for all who are spending this Christmas in hospital. Please give them your comfort and bless all those who are looking for after them. And we pray for all those who are spending a first Christmas without a loved one. Remembering especially the families of David Morris, Guy Bailey, Elizabeth Blackman and Brian Darge. And in the silence, those known to you. O holy child of Bethlehem, be born, born in, in us, us today. today. Jesus, be born in our lives. Help us to be people of joy, of peace and love. May the whole earth echo the sounds of your praise and beat with your heart of hope. Merciful God, accept Set these prayers, prayers we ask in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and he shall be given the name Prince of Peace. Friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you. When we were setting up to record this service, we noticed that we had still the crib installation 
left over from our nativity service and we need to clear it away so that the choir could rehearse a bit later on. But I think, having reflected on it, that it's an appropriate place for us to celebrate communion today. It's a humble setting and this has been a humbling year. And don't we say at the beginning of the nine lessons and carols, let us go once more unto the stable to find the child who is born there. I'm remembering in the early church, Christians used to meet in catacombs and celebrate communion using the tombs of saints as an altar, which is why we get our altar today and why dead churches are dedicated to saints. So I hope you'll feel that it's appropriate that we are here to share this holy meal together. Blessed be God, by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is opened, by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise. Blessed be God forever. Beloved, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is always right to give you thanks, God our Creator, loving and faithful, holy and strong. You made us and the whole universe and filled your world with life. You sent your Son to live among us, Jesus our Saviour, Mary's child. He suffered on the cross, died for us. He rose in glory from the dead to show that love is stronger than death. You send your spirit to bring new life to the world and clothe us with power to love. And so we join the angels to celebrate and say together, Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. On the night before he died, Jesus had supper with his friends. Taking bread, he praised you. He broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup of wine and again he gave you thanks. He gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. God of all love, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom of peace and compassion will be in all the earth. Pour out your spirit upon us that we may love one another and seek the healing of the earth. For honour and praise belong to you, Creator God, with Jesus your Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died and now lives for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. 
body of Christ broken for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Lord of this feast, beyond measure and price, we thank you for meeting us in our fragility, so that none might be lost. Liberate us now to share bread with our neighbour, each receiving from the other what we need to be ourselves. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And now may the joy of the angels, the excitement of the shepherds, the perseverance of the Magi, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, the wonder of the waiting world, and the peace of the peace of the Christ child be with you and all you love, pray for, remember and miss in this Christmas moment and for always. Amen.
there is no offer tree in our online service. But we ask you to give to the work of um, the church here and also to our charities, Step UK and Send a Cow. If you go online on our website, you can find ways to give. All the information that we have in this benefit is on our websites. There are other recorded services as well on our YouTube channel, including an all-age Christmas scruffy church, which uh, you might like to either watch or recommend to others you know with children. I want to thank everybody in both churches who have helped so much to get our services together, both in our buildings and also online. Uh, especially to thank our wardens, our church wardens, Judy and Mary, Neil and Liz. Um, our musicians, especially Nick and Richard and Carolyn, uh, Andrew and the choir here at St Stephen's. And I also want to thank Debbie and Andrew for being such a great team. Uh, really enjoyed working with them up to Christmas this year and uh, pray that that will continue into the new year. And finally, our families, um, who we're looking forward to being able to see when Christmas services are done. That's it. Bless you. Have a really, really wonderful Christmas. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.